Hello, it's Andrew, and I'm in my uh, garden, and I have a old hedgerow system behind me, which is the one you can see there. It is cut back. I've cut all the prominent um, bushes and trees back, so I gain a view out over the valley. But I haven't removed them. I just keep them under control to a level if, that I can see the view. If I was to let them go, they would explode, and I'll show you what they would look like and indeed what they did look like before I cut it back. This is the east side of the hedgerow running down into a field system and as you can see I have a substantial holly tree and you can see where I've cut it back here where there is some black thorn and hawthorn and it brings you around to a sycamore tree. This is the west side and as you can see I have hazel, holly, blackthorn, hawthorn and from what I can see a willow in there as well. I'm just walking outside my village, people are finishing work and they're coming home. But why am I talking about hedgerows? Well I'm going to show you something and I'm going to take you somewhere which really is quite fascinating and when you understand the mechanics of what I'm talking about you too could possibly find the ancient British hedgerow a fascinating thing to look at yourself and in that context it is a living monument on our landscape. So I'm about to turn into a small paddock which is basically the backside of the hedge which I own and we'll go down and have a look and things will become more clearer as we get down to the hedge and I begin to explain to you a little story. So inside this paddock this hedgerow system you're looking at wouldn't seem out of place anywhere within the southwest of the UK. Indeed most of the lower lying um, parts of the UK this tip would be a typical scene of a hedgerow where you have the old hedge bordered by um, fence posts and wire and it's been flailed. That would look pretty typical. This is a junction in this paddock where two hedgerows meet. One which I've just shown you and this one here which in essence runs down through the paddock, joins the other fields and if you was to follow it would go down through the valley. You can just see my fence there and possibly, possibly my woodshed roof. So my um, back garden is not very far from this junction. Why am I showing you this? Well I'm going to take you down this hedgerow and it will become apparent. I am hunting in this hedgerow and I am looking for something very ancient and something very special. It pretty much symbolises the foundations to our rural way of life and indeed the way of life and governance of these uh, parishes that our country and indeed the UK is made up of. And as I round here you may just see a stone. Now that stone is covered in moss. There is writing on it on the front but I can't get to it at this moment. So this is the front view and you can just see the indentation of marks. What that is is a boundary stone and what is a boundary stone you may ask? That marks out the corners and indeed the layout of parishes. So for people not too familiar with the setup, the lowest lowest denominator or, or governance of our country starts at the parish councils and that in itself is dictated by a given area that they govern over. Now that stone you saw there marks an extremity to one parish where one finishes and where one, another one starts. So if you look back up this hedge you can see I'm standing in one parish as it's on this side of the boundary stone and on 
the opposite side of that boundary stone, that hedge, sits in another parish. And indeed that hedgerow is part of the boundary system for the, the two parishes. Hedgerows, boundary stones, physical features on the landscape like rivers, um, big valleys, um, shall we say gr uh, outcrops and road systems and tracks would denote the boundaries and they would be marked with stones like that which you can find on maps to this day. Now those boundaries have fluctuated over time and indeed there's a possibility that they don't actually represent what they're meant to represent, the boundaries, because this is an ancient way of depicting boundaries, as I've just said. This boundary stone does depict, for me, the difference between two boundaries. I live in the curiosity of having my house and 99% of my property or 99.9% .9 of my property sits in one parish and a portion of my back hedge sits in another. Now this is a curiosity because it gives me and allows me the option to utilise either one of those parishes. So for a very short period of time, as I had a little bit of time on my hand, I got involved with the local parish council and that was the parish council that sits on the opposite side of that stone as to regard my hedge. So basically I only managed to uh, secure the, well, the position on the council because I owned a piece of hedge in that parish council. So if we get back to hedgerows and I'm just going to talk about hedgerows now in relation to boundaries and markers. Hedgerows are very, very ancient features on our landscape within the UK, particularly, like I said, the lower elevated parts of the UK. And indeed, they can be really, really old, you know, in excess of six, seven, eight hundred years, possibly. And some of these hedges do still retain that legitimacy of being ancient. The hedge on the opposite side of this wire fence, as you can see, is in a bit of a state of disrepair, but overall it's holding up good. And it has a wide variety of shrubs, trees and plants, and all things of that nature surviving in it, on it and around it. That can be used to gauge how old this hedge system is. There is an equation which comes under the heading of Hooper's Law, which gives you a rough equation to try and work out a hedge's age. But it is very, shall we say, fallible to being incorrect due to the fact, well, for several reasons actually, the first one being that uh, hedges can be altered at some point in their life and indeed do get altered. Species are transplanted into that hedge uh, by unnatural means and indeed without supporting evidence from historical documentation and maps and indeed uh, deeds to properties and lands you really are, shall we say, taking a bit of a poetic license using Hooper's Law, but it is a firm and it is used as a, a headway into ageing a hedgerow. So how does Hooper's Law work? Well, as a rough, rough guide, you need to find a 30 metre section of hedge and count the species of plants and trees in it. And when I say plants, that's the hardwood, uh, should we say shrubs and trees. Count them, and then that should give you for every species a century. So you really need to then find another 30 meters of that hedge 
and do that three times and calculate a rough average if you want to be more accurate that will give you the age of the hedge you then find some supporting evidence of that hedge's existence in its present form looking through the various means I've just talked about and then you can be sure that that is roughly the age of that hedge. So looking down at that corner of the field, uh, field system here into the corner and going up to the corner there I'm going to say that's roughly 30 meters. I have ash, sycamore, oak, hazel, holly, elder, brambles and that's just had a quick look. So by adding up those uh, numbers of trees in that particular 30 meter spacing on that hedge I would come to the conclusion of possibly 700 years. I live in a very ancient part of uh, Cornwall and it's well established um, that um, these hedge systems that we do have here some of them are in that age group so it would not be surprising if um, this hedge was one of those. Out of curiosity that is a water um, soak away that goes down through that dark patch there by the hedge and on the map it is indicated as such but um, that's possibly the reason that it is stone banked there but in all intents and purposes you could say that this hedge could be classified as ancient that doesn't mean it won't have been modified over its life it doesn't mean that you know there couldn't can't be aspects that are of a more modern nature been put on it that is just indicating that that boundary could possibly have been there for that length of time in some way shape or form and these trees our species of trees have been present on that boundary so i've walked back up to the boundary the very corner bit here and as you can see the very corner bit there where this hedge goes off to my left and this one here straight in front of me goes around and is my back hedge. So my back hedge sits linked to this hedge system here. So I can be confident that my hedge system, my back hedge has been in existence for a very, very long time. I'm back at my hedge so what do I actually have here on my hedge system just away from that corner because if you look just there that's the corner of the field we've just been at down there we've got holly we've got blackthorn we've got um, hawthorn we've got sycamore we've got hazel we've got brambles an abundance of brambles and there's more holly here Budley it doesn't count because that's just been put there by us. More holly. Got more blackthorn there beginning. More brambles. More holly. And obviously hazel over there. So it 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 doesn't hold quite as much as that last stretch. So if you were to reduce your figure slightly from roughly what I said to 700 over in the field bring it down to about 500 I would be confident to say this hedge system is between five and seven hundred years so yeah I'm you know very happy to have an ancient uh, hedge in my back garden it does come with responsibilities I do not want to rip out the species I got there as you can see I've cut them back and I will look after them I will not destroy them I do not want to do that I just want to keep the view that I have over the valley but I will always keep a root stock there and allow it to flourish to the point where it can be managed now if I was to leave this property and allow it to become or go back to a unmanaged way like the properties either side of me it would very quick reach for the skies 
as nature does but I shall keep it under control like I've just said so I hope you found that a little bit interesting and when you're out and about and or if you do have a hedgerow just try applying Hooper's law and see at the figures you can come up with and if you can then back that up with any kind of evidence that that hedgerow has been there for a long time you might be just um, well in the presence of something that's been around for a very very long time and indeed possibly longer than some countries have existed so this is Andy from Folklore Hiking Sticks uh, I'm going to um, pop in and have a drink it's a Friday and um, put my feet up by the fire all the best <laughs>